One year ago, to be more specific, about 11 months, we had a big debate on the floor of the Senate about Wall Street. What are we going to do about Wall Street and the practices on Wall Street which hurt our economy? Especially, uh, we were worried about the last recession and some of the things that happened on Wall Street at the biggest banks and biggest insurance companies that hurt Americans across the board, that reduced the value of your savings and caused us as a Congress, with President Bush's cooperation, to pass a basic bailout bill sending billions of dollars to these banks that had made stupid, reckless decisions that wrecked the economy to try to save them from going under. Think about that. Here are the biggest financial institutions in the United States that have made terrible decisions, some failed, like Lehman Brothers, made terrible decisions which harmed our overall economy, we're still suffering from it, harmed individual families and businesses across the board, and then as they were about to sink out of sight, they said, you gotta save us, send us taxpayers money. Well, I will tell you something, I voted for that. I'm not proud or happy of that. Uh, with that situation, but when the Chairman of the Federal Reserve and the Secretary of the Treasury come and say to you, as they did to us, this could be a catastrophe equal to the Great Depression if you don't do something. I, I thought to myself, this violates every value that I have about these Wall Street financiers and the way they operate, but I can't let the American economy go down. And I think many, many senators felt the same way on both sides of the aisle. And so we sent them the billions of dollars to keep them afloat after their terrible decisions. And how did they reward us? What was the thank you card that they sent to the taxpayers of America? They gave themselves bonuses, multi-million dollar bonuses. These same banks, in their reckless stupidity, driving us into a recession, bailed out by taxpayers, then came back and announced they were giving each other rewards for great performance. Millions of dollars, it finally ended up being billions of dollars to these big banks. Outrageous. So last year, we sat down in the Wall Street Reform Bill, the Dodd-Frank Bill, and said, we're gonna change some of the rules you play by up in Wall Street so that you never have a chance to do this to America again. And we went through a broad array of things that we considered. One of the things we considered affects every, virtually every single American, and that's the use of something called a debit card. You may not think twice about it, but for those of us who've been around a little while, there was a time when we had cash in your wallet and a checkbook, and those were the two ways you paid for things. Then came credit cards, then came this new invention called a debit card. A debit card is basically a plastic check. When you swipe that debit card for a transaction, money comes out of your checking account and pays the merchant you're doing business with. It's a great convenience. I use them now, I think more than half of purchases across America are used to using debit cards and credit cards every day. But at the same time that there was this growth in the debit card use across America, something else was happening that was entirely invisible to the public. Each time that debit card was swiped, the banks ended up taking a fee. Well, you say that's not unreasonable. They should be taking a fee. They used to collect a fee for processing checks. Why wouldn't they collect a fee for using a debit card? Except something was going on that we weren't aware of until we looked into it closely. They were raising the amount they were taking each time the debit card was used to now the highest level debit card transaction fees in the world. Now the Federal Reserve tells us they charge on average 44 cents every time they swipe a debit card. In other words, if you're running a little store in Springfield, Illinois, and a person walks in, and I've seen this happen, and said, I want to buy a $1.29 pack of gum hands over the debit card, they swipe the debit card, that merchant in that little store has got to look at it and say, I just lost money. I wasn't going to make 44 cents profit on the sale of that pack of gum. Now I've got to pay that to the bank and credit card company, 44 cents. 
So what we did a year ago was say, well, let's take a look and see what is a reasonable charge. Not what they're charging, but what's reasonable. To pay to the bank and the credit card company and the Federal Reserve, which if anything has a strong bias toward the banking industry, always has, they're never viewed as a consumer protection agency, came back and said it ought to be closer to 10 cents or 12 cents, one third or one fourth of what's actually being charged. And so here's what we said. Federal Reserve established a reasonable, proportional debit card swipe fee so that consumers and retailers across America are not giving to the banks across this country, particularly the largest banks across this country, this windfall every time a debit card is swiped. Sounds reasonable to me. These merchants had no voice in determining how much was going to be charged on a debit card transaction. They were stuck with it, and it was invisible, and it was killing them. Well, what happened? What happened after we passed this? The banks and credit card companies across America went on a warpath. We've got to stop this debit card amendment. They have spent a fortune lobbying Congress, working the members back and forth, saying, you've got to protect us. You can't let this new rule go into effect, which reduces the fee that we collect every time anyone uses a debit card. Why would they lose sleep over 44 cents? Add it up. Every month in America, the banks are collecting $1.3 billion from consumers across America every time you use a debit card to buy gasoline, groceries, go to a hotel, restaurant, make a contribution to the Red Cross in the middle of a disaster, pay tuition at a university. They're taking a percentage out of every transaction to the tune of $1.3 billion a month. And that's why they have moved heaven and earth to stop this new rule from going into effect, which reduces the fees that these banks, over half of them, the largest Wall Street bank, are collecting. We're going to have a vote on it this week. It's an important vote. And it's a vote that I think will be a test as to whether or not we're going to come down on the side of consumers, small businesses, and retailers in America, or on the side of the Wall Street banks and the credit card companies. Interesting test, isn't it? To find out where the Senate's going to come down on this. I think it'll be a close vote. I'm not sure, but I think it'll be close. And it's important. Senator Corker of Tennessee came to the floor earlier and said, well, we've come up with a solution. There's a new version of our amendment today, which we're going to offer. Some members have called it a compromise. It's not a compromise. A compromise suggests that both sides came together and agreed on something. There has not been any input from the retailers, small businesses, and consumers across America. The only compromise is among the big banks and the bigger banks in terms of what they're going to collect on these debit cards. And I will tell you point blank, if the purpose of this amendment was to protect credit unions and community banks, there's a way to do it. We can give them more reassurances beyond what the law already says, which I think is totally adequate to what we need to do. This amendment, this so-called solution amendment, doesn't even address it. What it addresses is the overall issue and the billion dollars plus that these banks want to keep collecting while a so-called study goes on for another year. They want to include, incidentally, they want to include in the reasonable cost for the debit card executive compensation, compensation of bank officials. How much compensation do we give to those who work at the Wall Street banks? It turns out that last year it was $20.8 billion in executive compensation. They want to add that in, part of the operational cost of using a debit card. The bonuses, we're going to pay for the bonuses? That's a reasonable debit card cost? I want to tell you, this amendment is written by and for the banks the biggest banks of all, and it's not written with the consumers in mind. Look through all the organizations of this new amendment and try to find one consumer group, one small business group, one group of retailers who are part of establishing what a reasonable fee is. You won't find them. They're all banking regulators, not people who have no reputation for standing up for consumers. So the debate will ensue for the rest of this week on this amendment. I think it's a critical amendment. I hope my colleagues will stand by me and the Federal Reserve the vote we took last year.